A homeowner robbed and tied to a chair what one of the robbers did on the way out that helped police catch up to him. And also some showers around the Las Vegas Valley, just none inside the Las Vegas Valley. We'll show you the latest radar and talk about your chances of rain tonight and also tomorrow. That's coming up. And the latest trends and devices on display at the Global Gaming Expo. How vendors are working to attract millennials into the gaming industry. First, we begin with breaking news on Fox 5 News at 6. A suspect and two people of interest are wanted after a deadly shooting at an unlicensed club this past weekend. Let's take a look at this surveillance video of the men. Police say officers found a man with gunshot wounds outside a clothing store near Decatur and Craig. The back room was an unlicensed after-hours club. Police say the victim had been in a physical fight with one or more of the people before being shot. He died at the hospital. Police are looking for a black 2004 to 2006 BMW 6 Series with black wheels and dark tinted windows. If you have any information on those men, if you recognize them or recognize the car, call police or Crime Stoppers 702-385-5555. Our other top story tonight, a man in northwest Las Vegas is recovering after he was robbed and tied to a chair this morning in his own home. Now police say one of the robbers has been arrested after he may, may have shot himself in the leg on the way out of the home. Fox 5's Adam Herbert spoke to the victim and he is live now where it all happened. Adam. Yeah, hey, John, this guy says he's definitely not going to be leaving his garage door open anytime soon. He thinks that's what might have started this. And then he says the guys, they just walked in, they had shotguns, and then they were able to tie him up with a bunch of electrical tape to get him to stay put and shut up. The man who lives here says it probably all started because of his Ferrari. His garage door was open, and then all of a sudden, two men dressed in black robbed him at gunpoint. I'm scared as heck, you know, so I got a shotgun in my face. Never experienced anything like that in my life. The robbers rummaged through the house for almost an hour and tied him up with computer cables and electrical tape. As I told him, I didn't have anything. I got hit in the head with the butt of a shotgun. And I was told, don't look at me. Shut up and look at the floor. Police say the robbers were stupid, especially because of what happened next on the way out. It was kind of sloppy and everything. Not very smart criminals. No, especially shoot yourself in the leg. Yes, police think one of the guys shot himself and was dropped off at the hospital by his accomplice. The second guy bounced, but once the shotgun show was surgically removed, the first suspect, he was arrested. Well, hopefully his partner will dime him out and we'll get him in custody too. Our victim says that's when he got his license back because it was on the guy the whole time. When I go and I think back on what happened this morning, I could have very easily been shot just because I opened my mouth. The man who lives there says the whole reason he lives in this area far in the northwest, far away from the big city is because he wanted to get away from crime. He wanted to live in a quiet place where there's not a lot of crime. And then this happens. That's why he leaves his garage door open, because he doesn't think anything bad can happen. Now he's changing his mind, and he's hoping they find that second guy. They find the rest of his stuff. So if you have any information, please call 911 or call Metro. We're live in the Northwest. Adam Herbetz, Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas. Throw back to you. At least the crooks made things easy for Metro. Adam, thank you. Two students and a teacher were injured in a shooting at an elementary school in South Carolina. One of the students is now in critical condition. Police believe the gunman also shot his father to death at a house not far from the school before the school shooting happened. Police say a volunteer firefighter risked his life to confront the teenage shooter, and he was taken into custody. Firefighters was actually uh, one of the first first responders to get on scene, and he engaged uh, the suspect, and at that point took him down, and then law enforcement was quickly behind him. We are heartbroken about this senseless act of violence, but we are so thankful for the quick response by law enforcement and school employees who prevented further injuries. Officials say a six-year-old student was airlifted to a hospital and is still in critical condition. The other child and teacher have been released from the hospital. Police say there's no evidence the shooting is related to terrorism or racism. School has been canceled for the rest of the week and counselors are available for the students. 
A Las Vegas man's car towed away even though it was legally parked. He now he has a lot of questions for the towing company, quality towing, but says he hasn't been able to get any of those questions answered. So we sent Fox 5's Eric Hilt to talk to the car's owner and has more on how that car ended up in an impound lot. Eric. And John Christine, it was some confusion that led the car to being towed. See here in Nevada, for a parking space to be a handicapped space, you need one of these, a sign that says handicapped parking and lists the fine. Now, the, the spot where this car was parked had some blue markings on the pavement, but didn't have one of these signs. So anyone was allowed to park there. The man whose car was towed said he knew that, and he said his apartment complex knew that, but his car was still towed away. Now, the car was brought to this impound lot, even though the apartment complex Complex said that he was okay to park there and it sat in that lot for two days. After his apartment complex got involved, that's when he was finally able to get his car back without paying for it. But he says he still has not gotten an apology from the tow company for something that he says should have never happened. What I find disturbing is that a company that's in the business of towing cars away doesn't know the laws pertaining to uh, what, what constitutes an illegally parked car versus a, a legally parked car. Now we reached out to Quality Towing, but ran into some of the same problems that Thomas said he ran into. Every time we called or stopped by, we were told that the person we needed to speak to was not there at that time. We sent an email to the general manager of the company. That's what they said we needed to do to get some answers for Thomas, who you just heard from there. We have not heard back from the company at news time. Reporting live, Eric Hill, Fox 5 News, local, Las Vegas. All right. I know you'll continue digging for, for answers to those questions, Eric. Thank you. We had something unusual happen in the valley this morning. We had rainfall. Yeah, there's a chance of showers overnight as well. Let's check in with Fox 5 Chief Meteorologist Ted Pretty. Yeah, I had a few uh, drops around the Las Vegas Valley this morning. Those showers moved out. Nothing measurable from that, but take a look at this. This was just a couple hours ago in Henderson, most notably around the Fiesta in Henderson, around the College and Horizon uh, area in Henderson, where two tenths of an inch of rain did drop. Sherry Stewart sharing us this video from, uh, presumably, really her backyard there where the showers were slamming down on the pavement. Right now, sun setting. I mean, 633 is our official sunset for tonight or thereabouts with the thick clouds out there blocking a lot of that sun early. Earlier than if we had the clear skies out there, it's going to be an early sunset for us. Here's a look at your Doppler radar right here. Now, all the shower activity around the Las Vegas Valley, just not inside the Las Vegas Valley. We have a few pop-up showers here and there. In fact, right now, some over on the far west side, but really not generating a lot of measurable precipitation. We'll probably get just a couple hundredths of an inch of rain out of this, if that, over uh, by the lakes and over on the 215 right now between, oh, it looks like around about the uh, Charleston exit and also the Russell exit in the far southwest. So around that area, around the 215 right now, just some light shower activity, but that's basically what we expect. These pop-up showers not dropping a lot of moisture out there. High today, 89, but right now, 82 degrees with a few raindrops out there. But like I mentioned, nothing widespread and nothing too heavy. We'll give you the update on what to expect overnight and tomorrow coming up. Send it back to the Anchor Desk now with John and Christine. All right, Ted, thanks. Thousands of cutting-edge games are on display this week at the Global Gaming Expo. It could now mean new casinos and device, new devices in casinos all, right. all over the world and right here in Las Vegas. Many vendors say this year, more than ever, they are trying to appeal to millennials. Fox 5's Abby Tedros talked with some of those gaming companies today. She tells us how they're trying to engage younger people. We've seen dozens of eye-catching displays on the floor like this virtual reality game, and it's all in an effort to win over millennials. The Global Gaming Expo brought out the flashy games and zombies, all meant to attract a specific crowd. The main target is, is 21 to 45 year olds. Millennials. They're a top demographic of Las Vegas visitors, but Darian Lowenstein of Gamblet Gaming says they don't really gamble. You know, I go to Vegas for nightlife, for the food, for the clubs, for the music, but when it comes to gambling, there's just not much that really I want to spend on. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's why providers and casinos at this year's expo are thinking young. The massive trend is all the casinos and the providers for casinos look at how to create new and compelling content for an audience who's used to having all the content they could ever want on their phone. Fox 5 stopped by Gamblet's booth and saw everything from skill-based games to virtual reality zombie fighting. You have monsters coming at you from all angles and you have to try to fight them in order to win cash and payouts. And while your friends watch, they can place bets on how well you do or if you survive. It's a new era for gaming. We're 
really trying to bring arcades back to life on the casino floor. Gamblin has a partnership with Caesars, so you can expect to see some of these games in one of their seven casinos in the second half of 2017. Happy Tedros, Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas. The Global Gaming Expo runs through tomorrow at the Sands Expo. Firefighters right now are battling the Loma Fire in California. Here is a live look right now. You can see fire retardant on the ground down there. The flames are centered on Loma Prieta. That is the tallest peak in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Evacuation orders were lifted this afternoon for all the residents, but road closures remain in effect. We'll keep our eye on it, but not a lot to show you right now from KGO in San Francisco. But you do see that fire retardant line. Right. Good, good aerial view there. Yeah.